Hi there, this is James from Junior Developer Central and I recently did a video about how to post data to a PHP or any other script running on a server via jQuery from the front end from your web page or web browser. So I thought it'd be a really useful idea to do a follow-up video which is basically kind of the other way around instead of posting data to a script on a server is to actually get data from an API or another script that's on a server too. So if you haven't checked out the posting data video, I'd recommend going and having a quick look at that first because I'll explain some of the background as to why you might want to do this and to get your environment set up. And I'll put a link to that just in the description below this video. So just to illustrate what's going on here, um, I just have a, a simple web page and I've got jQuery loaded in. And I have a very simple uh, PHP script called get.php. And all it's doing is creating a variable which is an array of these users and giving them a, a job title, a job role as well. And then we just echo that back out using the JSON encode function, which turns it into a JSON-like string to send back to the browser. So now we know what our script does, we could actually just try that out in the browser to see what that actually looks like. And if I do get.php, you'll see it just gives us this data back to us on the page. And what we want to do is actually grab that data using jQuery and then do something useful with it on our page. Okay, so let's go back to our index.html document. And this is going to be very similar, as I say, to the post uh, lesson that we did uh, in the other video. So do go and check that out. Um, but basically, I'm going to say I want to send a request to a local host, and it's to that get.php script. And we don't need anything else in there. And I'm actually going to use the promise like functionality that's built into this version of jQuery. And basically, when the response is done. I'm just going to log the data out to the console, data rather. And if there's an error, I'm going to catch that. And I'm just going to say if there's an error, um, again, just display that in the console again. And we'll put the always block in there as well, just to let us know when that's actually completed. And we'll just say console.log, we'll just say done. So just running through that again really quickly, we use the built-in jQuery.get function, and we just give that a URL. Uh, so we saw a second ago that if we browse to that get.php file, it will actually display that data to us. And it will also uh, then, when that completes, log that data out to the console. If there's an error, uh, display that to the console. And when we're finished, just log out the message done. So if we go to the web page again, and just to refresh that to load that, we don't see anything. But if we head on over to the console, you'll see there that the JSON string that we saw a moment ago in the, the web browser is, is now being loaded into our console via that jQuery request. So that's okay in itself. Uh, we've got the response back in uh, to our web page via jQuery, but we might want to do something a little bit more useful with it. So let's actually go back to the uh, page and instead of just logging the data out to the console, let's actually just write a little bit of a function here to do something. And first thing I'm going to do is just put an element up here. So I'm going to create a blank div element give it an ID of results, let's say, and that won't display anything by default. But when the uh, data has been downloaded from the get request, uh, let's actually target that element. In fact, we've got jQuery loaded in here, so we might as well use that already to select the element. So let's say jQuery, let's select results. And I'm going to, in the HTML, uh, let's literally just date, dump out the uh, data that's come from that get request in there. So let's go to the web page and refresh the page. So now we're actually just getting that JSON string and just literally printing it out into the into the web browser again. So let's refine that a little bit more as well. Uh, wouldn't it be good if we could kind of like loop through all of the results that we have there and just kind of like maybe make a, a list or a table or something like that. 
So we could do that by looping through all of the keys that are there. So the keys would be things like James, Sharon, Kate, etc. from here. And let's just say from that data, let's do for each of those keys and for each key that we get, let's say instead of just appending the whole block there, we'll say results and we'll append the key. Actually, let's just put a little bit of syntactic sugar on that and just say we'll put a list item and we'll say the key which is the name in fact we could probably change that to name because that makes a bit more sense in this case just loop out their names and then maybe just also put in the role that they have as well so we do that by just referencing the property uh, that is represented by that key which we we know the the data we've the object that we've got is called data and then we just pass it in the name property to get that that value out there um okay so let's just do this okay and instead of a div let's just change that to a an unordered list Okay, so if we go and refresh the page now, what you'll actually see is we get a really weird output. And that's because the uh, string that's coming back from the PHP script um, is literally just that, it's a string. So um, when we do that object.keys, it's actually just looping through each of the individual characters in the string. So you can probably just see the, the curly brace uh, just starting off and then the uh, double quotes and etc. So we we actually what we need to do is convert that string that's coming back from the server into a, a JavaScript object, and we do that with a very simple function, and we call that inside the done function. And I'm just going to create a new variable, say say it's results, and I'm going to use JSON .parse. So this is taking a string as we know it's coming back from the server and converting it into a proper JavaScript object for us. So let's just say update these variables here. So results is now holding an actual JavaScript object. So if we go back to the page and refresh, you can see now that instead of looping through each character of the string, we're actually accessing each property um, available in the object that's been converted. So there we have it. It's a very simple script to use the uh, .get uh, built-in jQuery function, but you do need to do a little bit of processing with the data that comes back to it, depending on what you actually want to show to the user. But you can imagine now that basic template that we've got here in the UL tag, once you've loaded in a front-end framework or apply your own CSS, that starts to look quite nice. And obviously it's dynamic depending on what data comes back from this get request. So there you have it, getting data with the get request from jQuery. If you found this video useful, just drop me a comment below and give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more web development tips and tricks.